Welcome back, everybody, to Making Money with AI. I'm Dave Espino and James Renouf, and today we're talking about making passive income with AI images. The uh, the quality of AI images has really gone through the roof. It's incredible with uh, different image AI tools like Dolly, but especially Mid Journey version five. Uh, the images are incredible. Let me share my screen with you really quick and just show you. The quality of some of these images that are made in Midjourney uh, are just incredible. Look at this image right here of this cat. It, I mean, it looks photographic. It looks like somebody took a picture of a cat posing, right? But then you look at something very uh, fantastical like this one right here, uh, something that's more in like the Pixar type of look. Then you've got like a product shot. You've got an interior shot. Uh, you've got like a technology shot over here. You've got a mythical dragon. You've got this style, which I don't know what, I guess it's Art Deco style, it says. And the cool thing about this, I'm actually in the Mid Journey Community Showcase, if you want to come check it out for yourself. But the cool thing about this is when you hover over one of these images, it tells you the actual prompt that was used to generate that image. So you could take some tips from these prompts and generate these images. So today, what we're going to do is talk about how do you make a passive income with these images? Yeah, and Dave, I think that is an important point, that being passive income. So passive income, the, the way I like to think about it is you set something up once and you can get paid over and over again. So many people think about time for money. Yeah, if you want to make X amount of dollars, you have to put in an hour for those dollars. Well, when we're when with Dave and I are thinking about, especially when it comes to AI is how can we use that power to really speed up that process, put in a little bit of work that have exponential returns. And this is one great way because as Dave said, Midjourney along with some other tools, but Midjourney specifically allows you to make these amazing images that right now people are willing to, to pay for because they don't know or care that these images are being produced by AI. And in this video, we're gonna share with you where the best place is to sell these images and how you can make this into a passive income. Here's one other thing about passive income, James, is because you do something once and get paid over and over and over again, the beautiful thing about that is you can stack these passive incomes. Right. So this month, let's say you do uh, 10 images. Let's just, just say as an example, and let's just say those 10 images make you 500 bucks monthly from this point on, right? And next month you do another 10 images and that makes you another $500 a month. Now you're at a thousand, right? I'm doing basic math, obviously, but the next month, 1500, the next month, 2000 a month. And there's no limit to how many of these images you can do and start selling. So 10 is ti a tiny number. Uh, but I'm just using that as an example of how you can stack passive income upon passive income. And at some point, you've got so much of that passive income, you really don't have to do anything. You could travel, you could pay off your house, you could buy a new car, you could do whatever you want because you've got so many of these passive incomes stacked up on each other. So I'm going to share with you kind of the 10 mile overview. The cool thing about this is all you need to know is how to work with this tool that, that I showed you here called Mid Journey. So take a look at these images and the quality of the images. Now, just imagine if somebody wanted an image like this for their living room, for example, you know, a, a Buddhist style image or something like that. You could make an image like this in Mid Journey by simply putting in a prompt. Now, a prompt is basically just a, a word description, a sentence description of what you want. And then Midjourney will create that image for you. In fact, it'll give you four variations that you can then choose from. All right, so I'm actually in my Midjourney account right now. I was creating images for YouTube thumbnails, so I wanted images of a shocked woman. And uh, James, do uh, you have any ideas on what we could create right now? I just was thinking off the top of my head, flowers. I mean, it's it can be anything, of course. Okay. Kind of niche, but um, okay. Let's say let's say flowers, like for wall art, right? So what you do in Mid Journey once you once you're set up, and we'll have some links down below to give you some details on how to do these things. So what you do is you type forward slash imagine and then hit space, and that allows you to enter your prompt. So let's just say uh, flowers on a white background. And then what you want to do is give it a little um, aspect ratio. So aspect ratio means the proportion of the image. So in this case, as you see the one with the woman with the rainbow colored top, the aspect ratio of that image is AR, that stands for aspect ratio 16 colon 9. Okay. 
So I'm going to put that same aspect ratio. This is a very simple prompt, flowers on a white background. Let's see what it does. So while we're waiting for that image to generate, and it, by the way, it's being generated based on AI's search of all the images in the world of about flowers. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about where is the best place to sell these images. And right now, one of the best places to sell these images is on Etsy. Now, Etsy is known as kind of a crafts marketplace, uh, and that's how it was known originally. But it's become one of the best places to sell digital products in the world. And that's because it's very similar to eBay and Amazon, which means they're bringing all the buyers to their site, Etsy. And now they have digital products available. They have digital printables. You can print these things as wall art. And the cool thing about this is you're literally just selling the image itself. You're, you're selling the image file. So that's kind of the ultimate digital product, right? You create an image and you put it up there on Etsy and you start selling it. It's that simple. Yeah, and I think I think a lot of you made a couple of points there, Dave. Number one is that people may or may not realize how many views Etsy gets. Etsy, Etsy gets billions of views. Right. Uh, you know, they have they have millions, tens of millions of active buyers that go on that website. And a lot of people think of Etsy for things like, oh, I want to have a custom made T-shirt, or I want to have a a custom thing made for me, which you can do with this. You could use the AI. But I think it's neat how you're focusing on digital images. A lot of people real, don't real, realize the digital things that can be purchased on that. So that that's right. absolutely huge. And again, when you're using seconds of your time, in this case, you've created this flowers on a white background very easily. Someone might really like that. And those seconds of your time, the quicker you get at it, that could be posted. And you know what? Someone might not buy that today. Someone might not buy that tomorrow. Someone might buy that a month from now. Another one that you make might sell today, but the bottom line to your point, as you keep stacking those, as you keep making it and making these and making it, making it fun and making it as a hobby, all of a sudden you have these hundreds, if not thousands of literal digital assets that are created and posted on Etsy. So that when that time comes that someone does a search for, I want a photo of flowers, or I want a picture of a cat, samurai cat, which you had earlier, that's very specific, but you just don't know. Some people are really into some stuff. You could just go deep with cats. You could just go deep with who knows what. You could just do flowers if you want. There's not an issue of, of having options here. It's a matter right. of taking the simple time to create these things. And then when someone wants an image of a flower, someone wants an image of a cat, et cetera, you're there to serve that need and you get paid for it. And you don't have to, you don't have to give it to them. It's all being done through the system, but you're getting paid. That's that's the beautiful thing about digital products. You list it once. And you get paid over and over and over again. And it's delivered, the product, the digital product is delivered by Etsy automatically to the customer. So the customer comes to Etsy, they find the image they like, let's say it's yours, they buy the image, they download the image, because you you don't even have to deliver it, you don't even have to have, have any communication with the customer. And they get they're happy because they're walking away with the image, and you're happy because you got paid. Now, just to taking a quick look at this image. This is literally flowers on a white background. So, you know, there's no arrangement to it or whatnot. So what you would do is just be more specific. The other thing is that I want this for wall art. So what I need is the aspect ratio to be more vertical. So let me just show you really quick. Uh, if you open it in browser, you can see kind of the detail of these flowers. It's really amazing. But now let's go back. And you could sell this on physical products if you want to, Dave. You could make sure. this as a coffee mug. You could make this as a as a literal piece of art yep. or something's wall. Yep. So let's do this again, forward slash imagine. And then I'm pasting that same thing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say wildflowers on a white background. Let's say wildflowers arrangement on a white background. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do a different aspect ratio. So we're going to go two by three. And let's see what it does now. So now we want it to be arranged. So here we just said well, or we just said flowers. So it's like they just kind of threw flowers onto a white piece of paper, right? But now we want an arrangement so it looks a little nicer. And then another thing we can do is do it in different styles. So let me uh, enter that one as well. Imagine, and I'm just going to copy this previous one, but add a little bit to it. And this is especially for those of you that have not tried Mid Journey, so you can see how cool this is. Wildflowers arrangement in a watercolor style. 
on the white background. And let's see how these uh, these two differ from the first one. And while that's coming up too, Dave, you could use something like ChatGPT to give you different prompts, so or to get suggestions, or you could. Uh, and you mentioned this in another video, you could go and see some of the example images that are there and see the prompts that they use. Right. So if anyone's right. struggling with what to say, you can just look at some cool images already on uh, Midjourney and then get inspiration in terms of what was entered to create those images. You just change it up the way you want it to be. Exactly. And and by the way, I think in one of our newsletters, uh, James, we added this incredible prompt guide for Midjourney. And if we didn't, we'll add it in the next newsletter uh for sure but there is this incredible prompt guide that actually goes into a huge number of styles a huge number of looks a huge number of artist styles like if you wanted this image in the style of picasso for example or if you wanted the image in the style of banksy the street artist you could do these images in any style and it it's amazing how well midjourney does that for you so what you can do with the uh, with this document that we're that we're giving away is you can go in there and see the style of image that you want, and then just copy some of those prompts onto your prompt. So it's starting to take shape. As you can see, this one's forty six percent now. It's sixty two. This one is just starting at fifteen percent. You can see now that we're getting uh, an interesting visuals, and by the way, different visuals, and so. The, the next step after you actually generate this image here is you're going to go to a site. I'll leave, I'll leave these generating. You're going to go to a site called Photopea. And Photopea allows you to take the same image, pop it in here, and then upscale it. Now, upscaling simply means that you are increasing the size of the image without decreasing the quality of the image. So... It's again, a, a, a type of AI, I believe that's working with this as well, where very often, if you just increase the size of an image, it's gonna get really blurry, right? We, we've all probably experienced that. However, if you use this tool and there are other tools like it, you can still, you can increase the size of the image and still keep a very high quality. And the reason we do this upscaling and making the image big is because that's what needs to be sold on Etsy. You need to have a really big image if people are going to print it out as a poster or as wall art and they're going to frame it. You need a super big and clear, very clear image at that size. So if all you do is you come back here to Midjourney and just upload these, that's not going to be quite clear enough and you might get some complaints. So what you want to do is be able to go ahead and uh, take those and put them in Photopea and upscale them. That's all right. So a great tip. Great tip, Dave. Because, you know, it's not just, again, the image is great, but if you want to put it on a T-shirt, that image may need to be bigger. And so that's that's, yep. that's important uh, point to make. You need high resolution. Now, by the way, as you can see here, look at this. I mean, this is an image made in mid-journey, and it looks incredibly clear. All of these do. And uh, so mid-journey version 5, the version that I'm using right now, which is the latest one, already has really nice upscaling but you're gonna to wanna to upscale it even bigger. So this one's really nice. Uh, this one could be used potentially as wall art. Uh, this one still looks like scattered you know, flowers on a, on a piece of paper and so does this one. So what you could do is you could take the ones you like and you could upscale them. And what you do there is simply hit, this is, uh, this is version one, this is version two, this is version three, and this is version four. So let's say you like that one. You just click upscale version one. And now Midjourney is going to upscale to the extent that it can do it. And then you take that upscale and you take it over to Photopea and you upscale it even more. Let's look at the watercolor one. So these are two different versions, right? So the watercolor one, uh, these look really nice. And these could definitely be wall art, especially I think this one down here. Uh, all of them actually. Look at that's very watercolor style. Absolutely, like if you put that on a on something, um, you know, to hang up in yep. your house, that looks really nice. That looks like someone could have actually done watercolor with that. Somebody did that by hand, you know. Like, look at this one. I like this one because it has different colors, but it all looks in the correct style of watercolor, which is what we asked it for. So again, you could take the one you like. Uh, let's say, let's say this, this fourth one. So one upper left, two upper right, 
three, lower left, four, lower right. So let's go with lower right upscale version four. The cool thing about Midjourney 5, the latest version, is it almost instantly upscales. So this one's already done. And you'll see this one gets done very, very quickly because it's almost already upscaled. So let's see how big this gets with the upscale. This is the size of the upscaled version. Looks really good. Uh, you may have to play with like the, the border, you know, and redo it a couple of times. So that's another thing you can do with Midjourney. You can come over here and you could say, hey, make variations of this one. Click that and it'll nice. make other variations of that. Here's the upscaled version of this one. I mean, that's wall art right there. This is the kind of art that I see in a hotel room, for example, right? Something peaceful or in a uh, doctor's or dentist's office, especially a dentist's office where they're trying to get you to relax, right? Right. So, now that we know the, the basics of how you make these images, and that one's still upscaling, let's go look at Etsy really quick. And let us and, know in the comments too, if you're enjoying these kind of deeper dives, let us know that please, because we wanna give you high level, deep dives. We wanna explore everything with AI, but if you're really resonating with this step-by-step -step walkthrough, please let us know. Yeah, so let's type in wall art. And wall art can be sold as a digital product within Etsy. And as you can see down here, we've got wall art. Here is a star seller uh, selling this vintage wildflower field wall art, field of flowers, bot botanical white wildflower art. I want to do something here, James. I want to take this right here. Oh, nice, Dave. I know where you're going. <laughs> so let's just take that and let's pop it into Mid Journey. So vintage wildflower field or wall art, a field of flowers. Sometimes when you type in for wall art, what it does is it, um, it adds a frame. So let's just say vintage wildflower field. That's, let's just say botanical wildflowers. And so basically, Dave, yeah. what you're doing here is you saw something that could be sold. You're seeing that it is being sold, maybe has high ratings. And so you're already seeing from the market that people are buying this. So you don't yeah. have to come up with something. You don't, you don't have to say, you know, would someone like this art? You could go to, and you see, okay, this, this is being sold for $60 here. You're seeing ratings, et cetera. The bottom line is, and then you can use um, websites that would would let you upload an image, and then you could sell that as as a wall order. They could they could ship it for you. It could be drop shipped for you. The point is, the market is already there. You make your own version, and then what's stopping you from making your listing with your your photo? Exactly. Uh, that took you seconds to make, and people resonate with your photo. Your photo being the one that the AI created. Yeah, and look at the the reviews for the for this particular one that's being sold. Uh, love it. I've been searching for a while for a nice landscape print for our guest bedroom. This one is perfect. Such a great price for the size and quality. So they're saying sixty bucks is a great price. Uh, I mean, sixty bucks to us is a lot of money for doing a little bit of playing around on Mid Journey, right? Sure. Uh, one time, literally one time, and then it can be sold for many different sizes. So look at it can go up to one hundred ninety dollars for this one. And they have 24 reviews for this item. So we know that at, at the very least, they've sold 24. But, you know, James and I know that if there's 24 reviews, chances are that they've sold four times that amount because not everybody leaves a review. Maybe a quarter of the people will leave a review. So we're really looking at about 100 sales at, let's say, $60 is the minimum, right? And their shop, Dave, on the left says 21,000 reviews. So 21,000 reviews. So you start looking at this and they might have they might have 50 of these type of things. They might be doing this themselves. They might have all these different pictures again. It's what it's about creating your digital footprint, getting many different variations. Right. And by the way, there is a tool before we go back to see what image it generated. There's a tool called Everbee and Everbee uh, gives you data. It gives you market research on Etsy products. So you can actually go use Everbee to find out which products are selling the most, uh, which products you can create that are similar 
And now you're using data to determine what are the hot selling products so that you can go and create your own versions of those products. Let's go back and see what it came up with. Okay, it came up with this type of art. So this is based on that same description, botanical uh, art. Let me move this up here. Look at the bottom there, Dave. It actually has like words at the bottom. Yeah. Which is really cool. So it's like vintage. Now the words aren't going to say anything, but it allows you to use Photoshop if you want and put in some words, maybe put some poetry in there. Yeah. Something that's cool. like that. Where can you get that poetry from? <laughs> Chat GPT, right? So now you can have the whole image and the words created in poetry. Now, this is one example. This is just all I did was type in the same exact um, keywords that were used to, to create this image here, right? So you could add the word landscape, which probably would have been helpful. Obviously, now this is a different, this is different aspect ratio. So this is this way. And so what we would do is do the aspect ratio opposite. We'd go three colon two, and then we would just say something like landscape, you know, and so on. I just want to kind of share the, the, the general idea of what you can do by understanding what's already selling on Etsy. Let's look at more wall art really quick. And then doing some research to see what are the most popular ones. Look at this one right here. This one's easy to do. Oh, it's like you just did that a second ago. It's 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 exactly right. Exactly like what we did. Let me go back to mid journey. Yeah, very similar to this style here. Watercolor. How hard would it be to make three images with mid journey? Not, not hard at all. Right. So now you're selling this little bundle of three images, art prints, call them art prints. And what they're doing is they're using a, a tool that automatically coordinates with Etsy so that they can actually ship the framed art itself. Um, and that's a whole nother uh, way to do it. But look at that. These are selling right now on Etsy. Uh, look at all the different variations. Vintage botanical prints. That's exactly what we did. Uh, custom pet portrait. If you wanted to do like a custom portrait, they send you an image of their pet and so on. Here's a mid-journey prompt guide for sale. People are selling the guide that we're going to give you for free. in we our just newsletter. talked about for free, exactly. Yeah, we're giving this to you for not that same one, but we're giving you an amazing prompt guide for free in our newsletter. Here's uh, one in the style of Matisse, famous artist, right? You could do this stuff in the style of Matisse if you find out that this is a very high selling uh, item. So that's what we wanted to share with you today. Now, let's talk real quickly about the passive income aspect of it. Again, let's say you're selling something for 30, 40, 50 bucks. And you and you hit on a on a winner, right? Because you've done the research, you've used the research tool Everbe to determine which are the hot sellers right now. You start creating those types of images, just the hot sellers. Now you've got uh, 10, 20, 50 of this $50 item selling and automatically being delivered to your customers. Like you don't have to ship anything. You know, as a former big time eBay seller, I used to hate shipping, okay? That's why I like digital products. That's why I like online courses because I don't have to ship anything. Well, here's another digital product that you don't have to ship. All you do is create it once in mid-journey, which by the way, is a ton of fun to do. I do it just for fun, just recreational. And then upscale them, put them up. And now you've got a passive income machine. It just keeps paying you and paying you and paying you. And sometimes people, Dave, as you know, they... They overcomplicate it and they say, it can't be this simple. And the fact of the matter is, it is that simple. Create, right. sh showing it on Etsy. It's a fact there's millions of people that buy from there. It's a fact that they get billions of views. And there's a fact that these digital items, which could also be turned into physical items, are being sold. So it's, it's a matter of creating these. Now, you don't have to paint it yourself. You don't have to take the picture yourself. You don't have to pay... Um, for licensing to someone to create this photo. You can have it all created for you with AI. You click a couple buttons. It's now or on the internet for people to, to find at their leisure, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And like Dave said earlier, it's about getting your piece of digital real estate, having it out there. And the more that you do it, the more that it comes back to you. Now, you might not make $10,000 every day off of one of these things, but guess what? In your spare time, 
while you're watching Netflix, you could do this. You could be on your laptop or however you want to do it. During a commercial, you could create something like this. So if you if you say to yourself, I don't have enough time, that's not true. You do. And then you don't have to go crazy with it. You don't have to spend 12 hours a day making these things. Maybe, maybe 15 minutes a day. 15 minutes a day. And after the end of the month, you're like, you know what? I've got 100 of these things yep. out there. And I'm getting sales. The more you do it, because it's there, it's just a matter of if you're going to get your piece of the pie. So this absolutely makes money and um, it's something anyone can do easier and than ever, ever before. Easier than ever before, because mid journey is like having a world class graphic artist slash artist in your corner. I mean, literally, and you tell it what you want and it gives it to you. And as you saw, the images are beautiful and we didn't even spend a lot of time on the prompt. Uh, I purposely kept the prompts super simple just so you could see the quality at the base layer at the very beginning of it, the quality of these images, just by giving it a simple prompt. Now, once you get good at prompts or you use the prompt guide that we're going to uh, give you in our newsletter, now you're really going pro level and you're creating imagery like we saw earlier in the community showcase, you know. So that's what we wanted to share with you today, how you can make a passive income with MidJourney combined with Etsy adding a little bit of market research to make sure you're making the right images, right? Don't just go put up any images. Make sure you're putting up the type of images that are already selling really well. Create your own interpretation of that image, pop it up there and start seeing a passive income coming in. So that's it for this uh, episode. I wanna encourage you to subscribe to our actual newsletter, our Marketing with AI newsletter. You'll see a link in the description down below and we'll see you next time on Making Money with AI.